Welcome back to the MVM review of Form Trajanum. This is a two to four player Euro game in which each of us are high ranking citizens, head of families in the Roman Empire, trying to build the Form Trajanum for Emperor Trajan himself. And if you didn't know, this is from Stefan Feld, one of our favorite designers for sure. And I would say right off the bat, this is back to form for Stefan Feld. Definitely a heavier game for sure in comparison to a lot of the games that have come out from him in the past couple years. Well, even Carpe Diem from this year, which Absolutely. is a much lighter game, this is definitely on his heavier end. Emperor Trajan himself wants to build the Forum Trajanum. That's this large form building that you see here. And through three eras, which are represented by these three stacks of cards, which each have eight cards in them, we're going to be placing our citizens onto our player board and placing them into the form in order to gather victory points. This is a complete point salad, so there's a variety of different things to do and to score points. Now, we're not going to get into all the technical aspects of the game because there's a lot of stuff going on. This is a very, for a stuff on Fell game, this is a very heavy Euro game. Yeah. We're going to be touching on the aspects of the game and then giving our review at the end. So, as I said, we are going to be playing this in three different eras, each of these eras is four rounds, so there's 12 rounds that are going to be uh, played through. The stacks of cards here, there's eight in a stack. Each turn or each round, two of these cards are going to be introduced into the street. These street cards are going to have different symbols on them, which are going to correlate to our colonia board over here. This colonia board is broken into grids that could have dark symbols on one side and white symbols on the top side. Yeah, these are going to house also all of your colonia. These are these little tokens that you're going to randomly place out on your board among some other places at the beginning of the game to set things up. On the other side of these are all sorts of different resources, potentially some minor actions to take when you're taking these off the board, and we'll get to that in a second. To set up your colonial board, you're gonna look at it, and you're gonna notice that, at least on the boards we're showing you on screen, there are gonna be four cranes in each of the different corners of the board. These are gonna represent the four different colors of buildings that you're building. Each player is gonna start with three female citizens. You're gonna randomly take one of those three and place it on one of your citizen tracks. So there's columns, there's merchants, and then there are construction workers. You're gonna choose which one of these tracks to put them on because they all are gonna give you one variable player power special ability at the beginning of the game. Your other two female characters are going to be placed face up in your corners, then all of your male citizens are going to be placed face down on the rest of your board, minus any of the temple locations that you see here. The last one you have is going to be placed in the bottom right hand corner. This is going to be your envoy. Your envoys are going to be used to go visit the forum itself. When you look at the main board itself, it's broken into a couple different categories. You have your place for all your cards. You have all of your trade John tasks, which are the end of the round scoring cards over here. There's a whole stack of those that can be used. Yeah. But only one of them is going to be in each of the different eras at the start of the game. And then you have all the different types of buildings in the game. Yeah, those buildings are going to slowly throughout the game come over to your col col colonia, yeah. colonia board. Uh, replacing the spots that you've taken your colonia from and use them or not use them, taking them as envoys in many cases to the forum. There's two basic different kinds of buildings in the game. You have single buildings and then you have double buildings. The single buildings come in gray buildings and they come in colored buildings. And then you have double color buildings and then you have a mixture of both. The gray buildings are going to correlate to the three different tracks that you see here. These tracks are going to, once you build them into your colonia, they're going to progress up on these areas, giving you instant bonuses when you build them. That's basically the components. Let's talk about the gameplay itself. So what are you doing? At the start of the round, two cards are going to be placed face up. Each of the players at the table is going to look at their grid and pick up one from each column and one from each row that is signified here. Yeah, and it's important to note, too, that these cards can be both from columns or both from rows. They're not going to necessarily be from either. But when you do this, you're going to take two of these tiles off of your board. This is the first of many, many decisions you're going to be making in the game. You're going to take a look at these things. Like I said earlier, these are going to have resources, workers that you can pull, maybe some money, a variety of different things. But another decision comes up. You're going to keep one of these, and you're going to give one to the player on your right. Yeah. Now, the player on your right, when they receive this, and of course you're going to receive one too, is going to then take that, and then you're going to decide which one of these do you want to use, because you might have kept one like, okay, this is what I'm going to do. But then you get this, and you're like, oh, wait a minute, maybe I want to do this. And yet another decision comes into play, because 
If you use the other player's tile, you're going to be able to place your tile down in the lower right hand corner of your board. And this is very important because those will be used as envoys throughout the game, which is another factor of the game entirely. Now, it's very important to note that when we reveal these street cards, everyone is looking at their tiles at the same time. So the game moves at a very brisk pace. The only times that you make that decision on which them to use is when it's your turn. So the first thing is everyone picks those and then in turn order, everyone's picking one tile to use and one to discard. Once you are done taking that tile, you're going to gather the resources from that specific tile that you collected. Then you have the option to build one and only one building. The building that you build is completely up to you, but it's dependent upon the different types of workers that you have down on your player board. You're going to start with some of these at the start of the game, and you're going to gather more from the tiles that you collect through the game. Each of these workers is going to allow you to build a very specific type of building. Your gray workers can build gray buildings. Your red workers can build red buildings, and so forth. Now, you can give up a gray and a yellow to build a double building, or you can give up two yellows to be able to build a double yellow, and so forth. But again, that always comes down to building one building. The other thing you have to make sure is that you have room on your colonial board. When you build on your colonial board, you can never build over a temple. You can never build on a colonial tile that's already there. You can't build on a previous building. So you have to have open spots in order to place these. The second thing is, if you build a colored building, you have the option of shipping those envoys to the Forum Trajanum, or Trajanum, right. here, according to the color that you placed. So if I, for instance, built a green building, I can take one of my envoys, if I have one here, this is why it's important to keep your own tiles at times and use other players' tiles, and then I can ship this to a green location on this board. Now, there's a couple rules that go into place here. Number one is someone's already started a green section, as you see here. I have to place in a, that green section. I can't go over here to place in a different green section. If not, you're free to place that anywhere. You want to place those around the eagles because those are going to give you victory points. If you complete an area, if you're the person to finish off that colored area, you're going to get a bonus. So there's a lot of things you have to think about when you're taking that tile and the building that you want to build. Because all those buildings are going to let you do something here, and the gray building is going to score you victory points at the end of the era. Yeah, and these are the two main puzzles that are, you're going to have going on in front of you. Both your board, because you're going to be taking these colonia off of your board, making space for buildings, and then the puzzle out here at the forum, building those things like Jeremy said, hopefully trying to finish them off, get the bonus. And then in addition, it, during scoring, there's a number of different ways it scores there. You're going to want to make big groups that are connected to score bigger points. You're going to want to build around those eagles, all sorts of things. Point salad is definitely <laughs> at play here in this stuff. You also want to make pay very close attention to the gray buildings because they're also important for each of these three different tracks. Every time you build that type of building, you're going to progress up that track and get whatever is located there. So you're going to do this four times in a row. Once the first player does that, they're going to pass it to the player on their left. Two new cards are going to be introduced to the street. Everyone's going to pick the tiles according to those locations. They're going to pick one, put it face on the board, pass the other one to the player on the right, receive one. Starting with the first player, they're going to look at them, decide which one to keep, maybe keep an envoy, maybe not. And you're going to do that four times. At the end of the era, this is going to be depleted with all eight cards. And then you're going to do a scoring round. This is very, very important. A lot of things go on here. Number one, you have to pay for the citizens that you've collected. Now, David said that some of these tiles are going to have resources on the back or be able to do something for you. There's also ones that have citizen tiles. As you notice at the very start of the game, we started with one citizen over here on the left-hand side. These are very specific tiles. They either have a picture of a column, have a picture of one of these bag merchants, or a picture of one of the crossed construction workers. If you collect one of those, you place it on the farther left-hand side of either one of those two tracks that correlate to them. Those open up special abilities. But they also multiply your scoring for gray buildings in the rows that are according to them for the different types of gray buildings. You have to pay for these people at the start yeah. of the round. If you don't, they flip back over and your multiplier is gone and your special ability is gone. You have a chance to flip those back over through the course of the game, but it's important to be able to do that because you're setting yourself up for massive scoring. Let's talk about the actual scoring. Once you pay for those or don't pay for them, you're going to score for a variety of different things. This is the meat of the game. The first thing is, as we mentioned, at the start of the game, you're going to start with these cranes in the corner of each of your player boards. These cranes are going to score you victory points according to that colored building in your colonia. These are going to be revealed when you take the tile off them, but they're only going to score once, and once only for the entire game. So in the first era, they score three points for every orange building. 
only two points in the second area and only one point in the last area. So there's again a puzzle on your own colonial board and when you want to build them and how many points you want to get for them. Yeah, and the next place you're going to score for are those gray buildings across the rows. And this is where that citizen section comes into play. If you have no citizens on a particular row, you're going to get one point for every gray building you have in different that row. Different gray building. Different, yes. Yeah. They have to be different. There are four different gray buildings. That's very important yeah. to remember. Um, if you have one citizen in that row, you're going to get two points. And if you fill that row with citizens, you're going to get three points. So like we said earlier, there's going to be some significant multipliers because if you can build a row that has all four different gray buildings and at three points, you're going to get 12 points at this phase of the game. So if you can do that earlier, you're going to score that a few different times throughout the game. Then you're going to score for your envoys. There's two different ways to score envoys. First, you're going to look at the Forum Trajanum and you're going to look at all of your colored people. If they are adjacent, meaning orthogonally adjacent to any of these eagles, each of them is going to score you one point. Now there's a special ability on your player board that can also score you diagonal points. And then for every one that you have built on top of an eagle, which is done by a very specific track, you get two points for them. Then you're going to score for the largest area. And this can be a consistency of different colored tiles that they're placed on, but it's for your longest area. So I've got one, two, three, four, five, six in this area that I built here. This also is going to be according to your player board. Each player has one of these sliders at the top of their track. The slider is going to denote two different things you're going to score. One, your largest area, which is on the bottom, and then your Trajan tasks, which are yeah. on the top, according to Trajan's head here. Now, Trajan tasks are going to be scored according to these cards here. There's two different possibilities on each of these different cards. Yeah, the Trajan task is going to have something that's really associated with how you've built out your colonia. So in this one, for example, I would need to have two different colored buildings or gray buildings above and below one of these structures that's built in yep. to your boards itself. If you've done that, you'll be able to score this card according to your Trajan slider. Yeah. Also, there's an alternative way of scoring down here that you can actually do as well. So if you've achieved both of these, you're going to score it twice. And in fact, if you've achieved them multiple times, you're going to get those points over and over and over. Now, that's very difficult, but it's there as an option. And then you're going to play another era. You're going to do that three times. This, each time a new era is introduced, this column is going to be built up, meaning that some of the points are worth less points to the course of the game. So obviously, you want to do things quickly as possible, but you also want to build yourself up throughout the game to get points. All right. That's basically the game. Yeah, uh, There's a lot more stuff going on, obviously. Yeah, we definitely <laughs> glossed over a lot of that, but to yeah. go into great detail, you'd be watching this for another hour. All right, so I wrote down some notes here. Review time. It's a Feld game, and it looks heavy. This is, this is I mean, out of all the games that he's come out in the past year, I wrote down Merlin, Carpe Diem, Jorvik, and then, if you remember, Oracle of Delphi. This seems to be the heavier out of all of them. Yeah, Which sure. I appreciate. I like heavier Euro games, and this, I can sink my teeth into this. But it's also, once you play a round of the game, it's very easy to play. Basically, you're just picking up tiles, giving one, and then choosing what to do. It's that, it's that forethought that you have to get into the game. There's a lot of pre-planning in this, which I really love. At the start of the game, you have to, just like Carpe Diem, you have to look at these goals. Because yeah. if you, you have to plan for some of these eras in advance in order to achieve them. So at the very start of the game, you need to know what you're trying to build in your Colonia, which tracks you want to move up, which tokens you want to be able to do, and even your planning over here on your citizen board. Which abilities do I want to do? Because this is a game where, uh, and I love these style of games, where you can't do everything you want to do. I, there's nothing more frustrating to me than playing a, a Euro game where at the end of the game, I've done everything you your could possibly- Your board's filled out. Yeah, I don't like that. I like these games where I have two tracks that I've done, and I've never had the possibility to do anything else because that's the decisions I made, and I have to live or die by those decisions. Yeah, I think the citizen area is probably the most significant example of that. Like, I can't honestly imagine anyone filling up a significant amount of their citizen board. First of all, it's very difficult to potentially find or receive from the player to your, to your right or left the exact type of tile you need to put over yeah. there. And then even if you do, that's a very tough decision because you have to pay those citizens. Yeah. Now, the good news is you're not paying for each tile. You're just paying per row, but still, money is tight, <laughs> extraordinarily tight. It's not yeah. even a huge economy in this game. You just really need the money in order to pay them at the end of the round. So yeah, uh, I would agree. This thing, you have to give a lot of 
thought. Yeah. I don't always do that personally. Yeah. So the other side of that, it can be that it's pretty heavy and a little brain melty because there's, you might get focused on, okay, I'm going to do this and this and this and completely have lost sight of these other things that you probably needed to do. In fact, scoring on these Trajan cards is the kind of thing that people can probably very easily overlook. Uh, one of the other things I'll say is the variability. Uh, like any good fill, this has the, the form set up, obviously, with these modular boards can be changed at the start of the game. It's going to change depending on the number of players. The player boards are double-sided, so you can have rows and columns that look completely different than other players' uh -huh. rows or columns. The goal cards, there's a variety of different ones, so those are always going to change every time. And then just the pure setup, the the the... The citizen you start with and the way these could come out at the start of the game, you know, the ones you pick, is completely variable. You have no idea what you're picking at that given time. So you're always making the best possible choice the time that you get that, that tile back for them. All those things are completely variable in the game. Yeah, that's true. And like Jeremy mentioned, that first citizen that you get, it is one of those things that kind of gives you that little bit of guidance from the very beginning. And you got to understand, after playing this a few times, you've, you'll recognize that any of these citizens have a distinct power. I wouldn't say that any of them are sort of the lame citizen, if you will. Yeah. They all have very significant powers depending on the engine that you want to build and the route that you want to take to your points. One other thing I would say about a Feld that is fantastic, and it is present here, and we haven't talked about it much yet, is the flexibility. Uh, there's this little guy here, the assistant. This is going to be much like a worker, something you're going to use to use workers of the different colors that you might not have. So you need two yellows, but you only have a yellow and a green. Well, you can use an assistant to make that green into a yellow. Now you have two yellows to build what you need to do. The assistant's going to be able to do that. And depending on the citizens you have, you can actually increase the power of these yeah. assistants and basically make them wild. So like any good feld, there's a lot of flexibility. There's also the patricians. Yeah. The patricians work in a couple different ways. You can get rid of one of them in order to break the rules of the cards that come out at the beginning of the game. Every round, you're going to flip over those two cards. If you really want to take a, a tile from a different column or row, mm -hmm. just give up one of these guys and do it. Yeah. The other way you can use them, probably even more powerful, yeah. is to get rid of two of them when you're choosing between those ultimate two tiles that you have to choose from at the end of the, that Pick both. phase. <laughs> Pick both and yeah. use both. Yeah. That is huge because you're effectively taking the resources or actions off of both of those tiles. And if you're looking at one that is a citizen that you really want and one that has some resources that you need, it gives you that option. Yeah, uh, the other positive I would say is the, the scoring. This is, like I said, it's a point sal. There's five different things you're going to score three times to the game. Fifteen times you're going to score. I love it. Negatives. This is going to be a challenging game for people that walk on that line of being a more casual gamer than an enthusiast gamer. Like this is, Carpe Diem I can see appealing to you. More so. I can see this appealing more to me because yeah. I like these heavier things. Uh, this game, as I said, it rewards long-term planning. There's a ton of things to think about in this game. So those people that just like to make an action and, and, and live and die by it aren't going to do very well in this game. Yeah, and I would extend that a little bit further. I mean, Jeremy's right. I probably err a little bit more on the side of the not so much lighter, but I like the medium weight felds for sure. Yeah. Um, more importantly, the different groups I play with, there's one group I would play this with mostly, and that's our core group of gamers with Jeremy and our friends uh, that would play a game that's this heavy. And I really enjoy this game. I get a lot out of it, but only with that group, because if I introduced it to some of the, my other groups, their brains would melt much more than even mine, and it might not be the greatest experience. So. I appreciate that it's colorful. I appreciate that it looks like a Euro. It's Michael Menzel. I mean, Michael Menzel is one of my favorite Euro artists. He's great. This, I mean, the, the board's beautiful. Everything about the game, to me, stands out. I really like it. Yeah, it is really an attractive Euro, for sure. All right, Form Trajanum. Hopefully I got that name right. Two to four players, 30 minutes per player. It's looking about two hours for yeah. four players. If you guys have any questions about the game, Make them in the comments below. Subscribe to us. Follow us on Twitter. Like us on Facebook. Everything else that we do. We'll catch you guys next time. Bye-bye.